So what if the next Samsung Galaxy S looked too much like this year's Galaxy S? Because uh, we have some details on the Galaxy S22 and it looks like they're taking a page out of Apple's playbook. Uh, speaking of Cupertino, it looks like uh, their privacy features have cost social media companies a ton of money this year. And if you're having some display issues on your Pixel 6, don't worry, there's a fix coming soon. I'm Jaime Rivera and uh, yes, I know that I took a few days off and I'll admit that I was kind of burning out. It's been a crazy season, please. Take care of your mental health first above everything else, my friends. This is Pocket Now Daily. The official news today begin with Tempo. Fun fact, I have been using the Tempo Studio for weeks, so expect that review coming soon. Thing is, the company just announced one of the coolest things that I've seen so far. This new product is called the Tempo Move, which they're calling the first personal training solution to fit nearly every budget and space. It's essentially a home gym that looks like a modern speaker, but once you open it, it serves as a weight rack. And actually, that's pretty much it. It's actually a device called the Core that fits on top of it, but then you can move, and uh, where you plug in your iPhone, and it uses your Face ID camera to scan your body in order to help you while you train. And then it plugs in via HDMI to your TV or a different display to give you a better view. It delivers weight recommendations, it checks on your posture in real time and even checks your environment and also knows exactly which weights you're holding. It comes in two color variants and uh, you can currently get it on Best Buy or Tempo's website for $3.95. Pretty much all the same functionality of the large Tempo Studio but for a lot less money and using your phone and TV to provide some compact solutions. Here's the thing, I don't think any other company has used Face ID like this for anything other than unlocking your phone so I'll keep you posted when review units arrive because that studio is pretty awesome. Now, believe it or not, let's switch on to Google and Pixels. And if you haven't watched my review on the Pixel 6 and 6 Pro, make sure you do. Now, uh, we're not gonna talk about leaks just yet, but uh, we should be getting those on the A-Series pretty soon. Now, as for the Pixel 6, it seems that uh, the experience hasn't been that positive for everyone. Multiple users have reported that when their phone is off and they hold down the power button to turn it on, horizontal light strips start appearing on the screen. And Google has actually acknowledged this in their support page by by saying that some Pixel 6 Pro units are experiencing display issues as they may notice straight and transient display artifacts when the display is turned off and they apply slight pressure to the power button but not enough to turn it on. But don't worry, apparently this problem isn't hardware related and it will be fixed, but until we get the December software update for the Pixel series. Until we get this update, Google is advising users not to cycle the power button to avoid seeing this and uh, to press the button correctly if you actually want to use your phone. Um, it sounds like you're holding it wrong all over again, but fine. And for the most eye-opening news today, let's talk about Apple, but not for the reasons you usually expect. Last year, when the company introduced iOS 14, they made a huge deal about their new privacy features that would finally let you opt out of being tracked by third-party applications. Uh, this caused a whole outrage from companies like Facebook that uh, launched a full ad campaign trying to convince people that being tracked was a good thing. Well, guess how much these companies have lost after these changes came into effect? A new report from the Financial Times claims that companies like Facebook, Snapchat, Twitter, and YouTube have lost $9.85 billion. Yes, with a B in ad revenue for the second half of this year due to Apple's privacy changes. In this case, Facebook was the biggest loser as they lost eight out of those 9.85 billion. I mean, no wonder they were protesting so much. Now, what's interesting here is that Apple's own ad revenue grew by five billion during the same time. So isn't it crazy to see how much companies depend on you sharing your information to make money out of you and you get paid none for that. Isn't that crazy disturbing? 
But finally, for the hottest news today, let's shift gears onto Samsung and the Galaxy S22 series. So far, the Ultra has taken most of the spotlight for obvious reasons, and uh, we do have some leaks for it, but we also have some new information on the smaller variants. Starting off with the design, we have some new renders from Let's Go Digital that show that Sammy might be pulling an Apple this year by using the same design we got of the S21 series. We're apparently getting a flat panel when compared to the previous generation with uh, smaller bezels and the same punch hole design. Now, when you turn it around, we have the triple camera array, but I don't know if it's because of the angles, but it looks like it protrudes a bit more than the rest of the devices. But anyways, moving on to the Ultra, a new tweet from Ice Universe claims that the curvature of the S22 Ultra will be smaller than the Note 20 Ultra. And uh, he then compared it to the Note 10 Plus, meaning it'll have less of a waterfall effect, but that's kind of the way it was with the S21 Ultra anyways. But uh, let's also talk dates. A new report from uh, WinFuture mentions that Samsung has started mass production of components for three different smartphones, which means we might be looking at another early release. There's still rumors of an S21 FE happening, and so the S22 might happen in either January or February. Heck, there's even the possibility of uh, us remembering old times with a launch at MWC. But uh, for today's question, let us know, what do you think of the Galaxy S22 series so far with the leaks? Because I'm interested, but it's gonna take a lot for me to stop using that Z Fold 3. That's just me. Leave us a comment down below, we'd love to know your opinion. Friends, again, if you wanna get the news earlier, follow us on pocketnow.com and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this one. You can also follow us on social medias, our extended coverage happens on Instagram, and follow me on my personal handles to see me take days off whenever I need them. Please give this video a thumbs up if you like what you saw. I'm Jaime Rivera, thanks so much for watching. We'll see you tomorrow.